Welcome back, everyone. Uh, today, we'll be continuing our discussion on Canvas. So welcome back, everyone. Today, we'll be continuing our discussion on Canvas. Um, so let's begin. So if you recall, Canvas is just an element, right? So in the same way that I can create an H1, which is an element, I can create just as easily a Canvas element. OK, there I have my canvas element. I can give my canvas a width and a height. A width of, for example, um, I don't know, let's say 400, and a height of, let's say, mm, eh, 300, whatever. There. Uh, we can't see anything right now, right? Because the canvas is there, but you can't see it. So why don't we give it a border? So, um, f in general, when you're writing HTML and you have an element, what, you, what can you do so that it has a border? Yeah, you can style it, right? So let's do a style. And let's select canvas. Now, how can I select an element? I can do it by ID, I can do it by tag name. So let me go ahead and give this an ID. An ID of, well, canvas, why not? OK, and how do I select something by ID? Good. Hashtag canvas, yeah. Hashtag happy, hashtag coding, hashtag, OK. <laughs> OK, so I made it kind of large, so let me make it a bit smaller than this. So let's have the width be 300. OK, good. Uh, let's have the height be a little less. Let's have it be 200 and, yeah, that's okay. Okay, I think that's good. So here we have our canvas, right? We can see it. So now we want to actually draw things on it. So for that, we need JavaScript. How do I add JavaScript to my HTML page? Good. And I can either do src equals and then a reference to the file that has the JavaScript, but in this case, I'll write the JavaScript directly into inside the tags. Okay, so the first thing we want to do if we want to draw something on a piece of paper is gain access to the piece of paper, right? So in this case, the piece of paper is canvas. So let's go ahead and reference this element. How can I reference this element? Do you remember? Yeah, so we have this thing called document, which is this object that gives us an ability to access the tree, the HTML tree, the DOM. So we have document, and attached to that document are a whole bunch of things, one of which is a function called get element by ID, which what do you think this takes as an argument? An ID, an ID. very good. So an ID of canvas. And this should return const canvas. And just to make sure that this worked, let's alert canvas. Yay, there it is, HTML canvas, perfect. OK, so we have a canvas. The next thing we do once we have our piece of paper is we need to go to the store and buy the various pencils and pens and rulers and markers to be able to draw on this piece of paper. Right? So we need a set of tools to draw on the piece of paper. Specifically, what we're looking for is tools that can draw in two dimensions. Right? So the way to gain access to the tool set that allows us two-dimensional access to be able to draw on the piece of paper is to get a two-dimensional context. So canvas.get, what is it, context, I think. And I pass in 2D. <coughs> Last time I wrote the word context, I wrote C CTX, I could write Boros here. But the reason why we don't want to use Boros is because Boros is a name of a person and we want to be a bit more accurate, so instead we say context. Again, let's make sure that this worked. Do we actually have a context? Yes, we do. There it is. It's a canvas render context 2D. One thing to note about how I'm programming. Every time I do something, I check. Did you notice? I don't write this much code and go, eh, it doesn't work. No, 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 no. As you're writing your code, you check your code. 
little by little. You don't move on to the next thing until you're sure the thing before actually works. One hint about how you should do your homework. Okay, so we have our context, good. Next, what we want to do is we want to be able to draw on it. So let's have a function that is responsible for drawing things on this canvas. So const draw. And this will draw something, let's, let's draw something very simple. Let's do context.fillrect. And what do we want to draw on it? Let's at very top, 0, zero let's say 100 by 100. Let's just fill a rectangle. Nothing happens. Why? Because I created the function that knows how to draw, but I never actually called the function to do it. So if I were to call it, boom, perfect. So far, so good. Okay, but let's not call draw just yet. Instead, let's put it into an animation loop. Let's continuously call draw. So call draw, wait, call draw, wait, call draw, wait. So we need an animation loop. So const loop, this is our function, which will call draw, and then it will request animation frame, and this function takes as an argument what? No, a function, right, which in this case is a loop, and loop is a function, right? Loop has a function inside, see? Loop has inside this function. So it takes as an argument a function, which it will call the next time it wants to render something, the next time it wants to draw something on the screen, which is basically a little bit later. And then it calls again a little bit later. So by doing this, what we've effectively done is created a recursion, right? Loop then calls this guy, which then calls loop, which calls this guy, which then calls loop, which calls this guy, and in this way you have a cycle. But request animation frame does not call loop right away. It calls it a little bit later, and then it draws, and then a little bit later, and it draws, and a little bit later. And in this way we have a cycle. Make sense? Okay. Nothing on the screen. Why? I didn't call loop. Good. I've created this function loop that, yes, does recursion, but I never actually called it. So let me call it. Cool. So now I have this box that draws a box, that draws a box, it draws a box. It keeps drawing the same box at the exact same location on top of itself, which is why nothing changes. But we can see from the code that a loop is, in fact, happening here. If you recall though, I mentioned that game development generally involves two parts. Drawing of things and updating state. That is to say updating data, right? So we need a function, perhaps why don't we call it update or update data, which will be responsible, we'll write this code later, you know, to do, write code here. Ah, sorry, yes, perfect. Thank you, sir equals function, nice. And this is where we will eventually write code and we can call that from here, update data. Okay, for now calling this function does nothing but later we will fill it in and it will actually do something useful. Okay, so what do we want to do? Instead of drawing this ugly rectangle thing, why don't we begin by drawing a beautiful picture? Okay, so the first question is how do we draw a picture on canvas. Well, we know that we can draw shapes, so we could technically draw a picture ourselves by drawing circles and rectangles and so on, and basically design a picture in this way. But that can take a lot of time, and so if we want a high resolution picture, what makes sense is to actually use an existing image, like a JPEG or something. So the first thing we'll do is let's get a background image. So let's do game. Let's search for game background. Let's do image search when this eventually comes up. Okay, so we have a bunch of backgrounds that Google has found for us. What's a fun one? Let's see. Well, how about this one? Graveyard. Graveyard? Which one's to? Right there. You guys want to be, I was going to do Mario. If you guys do this, it's going to be like Mario in a graveyard. <laughs> You want to do Mario in the graveyard? Yeah. 
Everyone, okay, everyone wants to, okay, fine, we, do, we use a graveyard. Jesus. Okay, so uh, the, listen, listen, listen. So the right way to do this if we were building our own game was to first not take someone else's picture because obviously this is copyrighted, right? I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. You would either want to get an image that is open sourced or draw it yourself. Okay, and then what you would do is you would download it, put it into the same directory, maybe, as your HTML, and then you would reference it from your JavaScript. But for now, just because we have a problem with time, let's just copy image address, which will give me the address of the actual picture somewhere on the server. So I have this address, so this is the address I copied, this one, and if I go to it, it gives me the picture. Yeah? This is just knowing how to use a browser. Okay. All right, good. So now that I have that, how do I draw an image? Well, first, well, so I don't know how to draw an image, let's pretend. How would I draw an image? How do we find out how to draw an image? Google it. Google it. All right. So, canvas draw image, I think is what we want. What's the first thing that comes up? Look, context.draw image. Beautiful. So it gives me a bunch of things. It says what each thing is, the parameters, blah, 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 blah. I want to find some code that I can use. Um, here we go. This is, a, this is it. So let's copy this over for one moment. I will explain what this is in a second. Okay, let's get rid of this. And let's get rid of that. Yeah, yeah, one second. Okay, so first of all, we don't like var, so const. Second, what does this do? So let me get rid of the comments, and let me replace this URL with the URL that we have. That would be this one. Uno momento, por favor. Okay, what did I just do? So this, is a slightly more complicated way of making an object that has inside of it already a bunch of functions and things that understand how to work with images. Okay, so this, don't worry about the syntax for now, just copy and paste it for now, I'll explain it later. But basically it will make it an object. So image is an object. Just assume that it is. There's a key called SRC attached to that object. S SRC meaning source. I can set that source to any address I want. I can have it be a local address, or in this case, it's an absolute address referencing some image online. The moment you do dot SRC is equal to this, it starts trying to download that picture. Okay, so this is an object that you give SRC and it begins to download this picture. With me? Okay, then if we go back to our example, here they, have, they should have a draw image, this one. Let's go back here. Let's draw an image. Uh, did, yeah, context, draw image. This is the image. This is that object. This is the xy, and instead of this.width, we're going to say canvas.width and canvas.height. Why? Because we want the background to fill our canvas, right? Let's see if that worked. Voila, we have a background. So let's get rid of the border then, because we don't need it since we have a nice background. So let's get rid of that. And there we go. We have the beginning of our game, the background, right? Cool. We can, but remember, you're going to be, as you loop, you're going to be erasing things, right? So when you erase, like if you do a clear rect, it's going to clear the background image as well. So unless you redraw it, it's going to stay like black, white after the first second. Yeah, in, in, in fact, instead of doing f f uh, clear, uh, f clear rect, we could just draw the image. If you think about it, it's the same thing, right? We just draw the background again and then draw on it, and then draw the background again, and then draw on it, draw the background again, and draw on it, right? No, 
There's no stack overflow there. Okay. Can I yes. What, if, uh, what about the size of the picture? Size of the picture return? Uh huh. Should we size it according to? It it it, it does. Um, which is and but by the way, the resolution is not super high. It seems well, actually it looks okay there. Yeah, no, it does. Try, it tries to resize it. So if I tried to do, um, if I did uh, height minus mm, 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 over two, see, it's squished it. So yes, it does. Yeah. So how can we get the original picture? Don't set width and height. I think if you do this, by default, it uses its. Yeah, here it is. It's massive, which is why you can't see it. Okay, so is this clear? Okay, so image is not a very good variable name because all it tells us is that it's a picture. But a picture of what? Exactly. It might make sense to say background picture or image. How about that? Background image. Now, this makes a lot more sense. Cool. Okay, so we did the first part of our game is we have a nice background image. Now let's put in a character. Uh, I was going to put Mario, but I'm open to suggestions. You guys want to put a ninja in there? A Pokemon? Someone say Pokemon? Wizard? Wizard? Oh, you want the wi the Reaper? <laughs> Wait, image. But these are just too cute. You guys want something dark? Uh, I really wanted this one. Look, am I? <laughs> when I grew up, we played Mario. You guys are playing like Mortal Kombat, ripping each other's heads off. Which one? Which one? With the dragon? Oh, on the dragon. This one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah. So one thing, guys, is make sure when you do use an image, get an image that is transparent in the background. Otherwise, you'll have an image with like a white frame around it, bouncing, and it will, won't look good. Okay, so let's copy the address. And let's make another image, const Mario, a uh, new image. Actually, Mario image. Okay, now remember going back to our basics. What is this? It's an object. What is this? A key. What is this? What is it though? It's a string. And the value inside the string is HTTPS colon blah, blah, blah. In other words, it's the address of the image. Okay? All right, so now let's draw Mario. So let's... Um, so let's draw Mario. Where should we draw Mario? At like... How big should he be? I don't know. Uh, 50 by mm, 20... 40 by 60, let's say. Let's see how that looks. There's Mario. Oh. That looks pretty bad, huh? Why does that look so bad? Oh, it's, it's a big picture. Mario. Let's do 0, 0. Wait, 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 wait. Mm, 0 and 0. Okay, can we just use a ninja? Let's use a ninja. This is too... The contrast between the dark and the light is too much. So, nin, cute ninja. And, oh, so we want the background to be transparent, right? So look, you go color, uh, transparent, right there. Okay, so these are the transparent background ninjas. The first, no, the, I so see the first one has that shadow? It's not going to look good. Ninja bait. How about this one? Huh? 
This one, Ninja Baby? No. no. This one. No. The Sleeping Baby? No, that's gonna look. I want to use this one. That's too aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rube, what'd you do today in class? Oh, nothing. We're just browsing pictures of ninjas and, you know. Okay, instead of calling it Mario, let's call it Hero. That way we can change it later if we want. Yeah? Hero is kind of abstract, right? Hero. Hero. Okay. <laughs> Spasic, settle down. All right, 100. Okay. So, never mind the pixelation, let's just move on, okay? Whatever. This, okay, we have a picture, great. Whatever. Okay, let's uh, now. Uh, it, remember, it's not a good idea to just hard code data uh, here. We want to have data separately so we can modify it in our update data function, right? So instead, let's create a const uh, data or game data. And in here, let's have our hero. And our hero should have a location where that hero should be. Probably, right? So uh, let's have an X of, say, z let's have, we'll get back to, okay, let's do 100 for now. Y, 100. A width and a height. Um, let's have them be, let's say, 40 by 50. Sure, or yeah, 50, 55. Okay, now we want to move the hero. That means we need a delta attribute, right? But we want to move the hero both in this direction as well as this direction. So we need a delta for this and a delta for that. Yes? Help me. Okay, let's say one. Okay, why delta? Let's say one as well. Um, actually, let's have y delta be zero. For now. We will change it later. Um, okay, so we have our hero, and our hero should also have an image. Um, hero image. There we go. Right? So right away, I can just say hero.image and get access to the image. And then here, we can just change what the image is. Yes? Do we write in there with curly braces? Do we write what? Sorry? It's an object. Inche, Jenna. It's an object. Yeah? So we start of the object. Uh, end of the object, which has inside of it a key that has inside of it an object. Yeah? Is this making sense to you guys? Yeah? Yes. X delta is something we will use later to move. Actually, you know what? Let's have X delta be zero too. At the beginning, the ninja is not going to move. It's just going to... And then when we... When we use the keyboard, it will, you know, okay, later. Okay, fine. So, is, are there any questions about this construct here? Okay, so what we need now is some code to draw this on the screen. So, let's get rid of this. Okay, and let's instead call uh, context.draw, what is it, draw image. But here, let's do game data. Let's get access to the hero. Const hero is game data dot hero. This will return the hero object, right? In other words, this object here. Wait. Right? Okay. So now I have hero, and here I can say hero dot image. Hero dot x. Hero.y, hero.width, and hero.height. Ah, hero cool. So there's my hero. Okay. So let's have the hero begin. So you see this grass? 
it makes sense for the hero to be on the grass, right? Not floating up in the air like this. Huh? Do I see the grass? I don't know. I just assume it's grass. It's a bunch of dirt. Okay. So somewhere here is probably where the hero should be. He can maybe jump up, but then he has to come back down to the grass or to the floor. Yeah? Okay. So let's have the, uh, the y-axis begin with the floor. Yeah, exactly. Roughly where the pumpkin is. Yeah. Okay. So where is the floor? Well, let's say the floor is cost floor uh, floor y would be the canvas dot height minus say fifty is roughly where the floor would be, and let's have that be where we begin. <coughs> Am I right? Nope, too much. Sorry. Need to go up more. So let me subtract, not 50, but say 100. Wait. Okay, too much. 72. 72. Wow, how specific of you. Oh, boom. That man knows his pixels. All right, good. All right, very good, very good. Okay, now. Okay, so this is, you know, mildly interesting, but let's have it so that we can move the ninja back and forth. Yeah? So we want to be able, the ninja to be able to go back or to go forward. Fine? Okay. Um, so for that, we need a controller. Well, for a computer, we could control it using the keys, right? Maybe a left and a right. Okay, so we need, uh, we need to hook to a key press event. In your homework, I gave you this function. Let's copy it and bring it here and use it. Um, boom. Okay, let's format it a bit. I will explain what this is in one moment. Rest easy. Okay. Okay. Forget about this for one moment. Document, remember, is the, the, the thing that represents the tree, right? The HTML tree, right? What we're saying is, hey, tree, um, let me know when key down happens. The tree goes, okay. Okay, and whenever we press, it calls the function that we give it with an event. The event is an object. The object has attached to it in a key called key code. What do you suppose key code is? Yeah, it's a number that represents the key that was pressed. So you don't get A, B, C, you get a number that means A. Now the question is, well, how do you know which number means what key? Right, good question. How do John, we Google. So we say, um, you know, key codes in JavaScript. Okay, here it gives me a preview. Enter is 13, shift is 16, seven, whatever. And then you can also just go into here. Uh, oh, wait, we want the keyboard ones. Keyboard event key codes. Here we go. It should have a list somewhere, does it? Does it have a list? No. We give, exactly. <laughs> yes, we could also try ourselves, yeah. Uh, key codes. I know, and I just, as me out to do it coming. Press any key. Ooh, O. Oh. Does anyone want to know what L is? It's that one. Anyone want to know what M is? It's that one. Okay, so the idea is if you want to know what the key codes are outside of the ones I gave you, just ask Google. Okay, so um, these ones I gave you, so left is 37, up is 38, right is 39, and down is 40. Well, you can just go into Photoshop and, and mirror it. Huh? 
online for lavali how much for let do come like okay all right so now we want to go back how do we go back help me what no google is not going to tell you this yeah go yeah, that's exactly it. So now tell me what to do. Else if. Then we do all this. You know what? Why don't we take a hero and store it so we don't have to keep having these. And then here we can just say. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Copy, paste, minus five. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Wee, 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 wee. Let's jump. Okay, it's <laughs> possible. Okay. It's guys. Wait. The cuteness aside. I want to make sure you understand how this works. Watch what happens. Just one moment. Watch, just look at this carefully. What we do is we change the data whenever the key goes down, right? Hey! What we do is we change the data, right? Then the next time the loop runs, it will draw. And it draws the data. You get it? So you're changing the data here and it's updated, it's rendering the data there. You, you guys get it? So this is nice separation of concerns, right? If you think about it, you only deal with data. You don't care how it's rendered. You only care about the data. Another part of your code cares, doesn't care about the data, it just cares about taking the data and drawing it. And this way you separate your logic. So if you want to change how the data is drawn, you don't have to change how the data is updated. Same way, if you want to change the logic of your data, like if you wanted to add gravity, for example, right? You only change it where you're updating the data. You don't touch the rendering. The rendering will just draw what you do here. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, good. So now question. The problem with this game, or one bug, one issue that I see right away, is this. Now we could do a few things. So first of all, you tell me, you guys play a lot of games. What often happens in video games if you try to go outside of the bounds? Okay, yeah, so some games just block you, right? Basically, when you hit right, nothing happens. Like you go to the end and you stop, right? The ninja goes and it's just, right? It's just standing in one place, okay. Other games, if you go out this way, you come back from there, right? Okay, which do you want to, which one should we do? You tell me. The second one, the rotating one? The, the second one, okay, the rotating one. Okay, good, all right. Okay, so um, if you want to go right, that means before we move you right, we have to first check, actually we could move you right, and then we have to check, have you gone outside of the bounds, outside of the limit? If you're going this way, what should be your limit? Okay. Okay, so look. Okay, so let's say this is the end and I'm the ninja, right? If I come here, should I right away happen here or should I go and then come here? The first one? Okay, then we, re then we do what you said, we minus the, okay. So if hero.x is greater than or equal to can, canvas.width, that's it? My, like that? In that case, we move, we do hero x, 
and we move them to the other side, what is the beginning of that side? Zero. Zero. Zero each? Zero minus With the power here. Okay, but remember, x is on the left side of your hero. Look, x and y is here. This is width and height. So this is x. So if this is the end of the game, you want them to... Right? You agree? So what is this? It can be zero, but I mean, it would be better if we started from minus zero dot width. So we can enter the canvas. Fair, fair, fair. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. But just remember, we're going to have to do something similar going this way to flip them back this way. So don't make sure your logic is not overlapping. Otherwise, it's just going to throw them back and forth. You understand, right? Okay, so for that, why don't we just do e equals one? Okay, you know what? Let's do zero and you'll understand why this could be a problem. Okay. Um, Okay, let's do it. Let's see. Did this work? Oop, sorry, sorry. Whee! <laughs> All right, not bad. We got ourselves a little ninja. Wow. By the way, I'm holding the, down, the right key. Just That's why it's going. I can go. Or just hold it. Okay, so we... Da, 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 da. Hang on, let me get them close so we can see. Boom. It's not smooth. Okay, so we could make it more smooth by doing what? Plus one instead of plus five, right? That's one way we could make it smoother maybe. Okay, fair enough. But again, I just, whatever. You can play with this when you write your own games. Okay. Um, similarly, if we do this though, you may be want him to come back the other side. Yes or no? Maybe? <laughs> okay. All right, so what can I do? The same thing on this side. So if, if hero.x is less than or equal to what? Zero, the other wall, the left wall. Then let's have hero.x be Well, why don't we do this first, and then we can shift it. Look. Where is he now? Canvas width. There he is. Right? So, that was a little weird, I think. Maybe bring him this way, or this way a bit more? Wait. Okay, now if we move him back, wait. Not bad. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> when you write your game, I love this dude. This is love it. They turn their head to it. Use my. I want you guys to understand the process. Yes, of course, lots of things can be done differently, of course. Just, you know, we only have so much time. Okay. Okay, so we have our hero that can sort of walk around. That's, you know, mildly cool. Uh, what's another thing that a ninja should be able to do? Jump. Okay. So why don't we have the up button mean jump? Yes. Yes. So jump isn't one thing. So jump is actually much more difficult than forward and, and left, right? Jump requires a delta to be, you know, going up and then going down. Yeah? But maybe when, while he's jumping, we put the right arrow and we want him to shift during his jump. Right. So think of it this way. The jump will only affect the Y. The X can still be, yeah? That's why when you jump, you see like a lot of video games, if you go, even though you jump this way, you can go left and it jumps back. Like it makes no sense, of course, physically, right? I mean, that doesn't, but again, all you're doing is shifting the X, right? So even though he's here, you just shift X and it goes this way, but the Y is still going up or down, yeah?
Okay. So let's do that. So what, sorry, when we, let me save this code just in case my computer crashes or something. Not crashes, but okay. Um, so we have an if for the right, we have an if for the left, let's have an if for the up. Events.key code is up key. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. A few questions for you guys. I hit the up and he starts jumping. I hit up again. What should happen? Jump higher. Jump, jump higher? <laughs> Interesting. That's really? That's actually what you want? Okay, let's. I forgot you guys have imagination. Wait, okay. All right, let's keep this very simple. If you hit up while the ninja is moving up or down, nothing happens. You can add this kind of stuff when you guys write your games and do your projects. By the way, this is, I'm loving this. This is awesome. This is what I mean. When you guys start writing your games, you can get as specific as you want. Like, you can add anything. The world is yours. You can add your own physics. Like, stuff that doesn't exist in the world, you can code into this and have the ninja do that. A lot of fun. Okay. Okay. So, we want the ninja, when you press up, to go up. Yeah? So that means, well, what affects the Y? We need a delta, right, to affect the Y. Um, so the delta, if you recall, we had a Y delta here that was set to zero, right? So why don't we change that Y delta to be one? Or, you know what, let's have it be three. Now, how do if, but if y delta is not zero, in other words, the, the hero is already doing something, right? So we should not do something. So only do this if hero dot y delta is already zero. Does that make sense? Okay, because if it's zero, we're going to change it. So the next time you hit it, it's going to be three and not zero, so nothing will happen. Fair? Okay. 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 But here's the problem. One problem that you will see right away is that when you do this, the hero will just be drawn one up and that's it. There's nothing else in our code that's going to keep changing Y delta. You need to have some sort of a cycle, right, as you're going, to every time you render, you update the position of the ninja. This is where the update data function comes into play. You see this? So we check, so we get the hero, const hero, game data dot hero, if hero dot y delta is not equal to zero, Let's have whoop, hero dot y delta equals, wait, I'm sorry, we want the hero dot x dot y to increase by hero dot y minus hero dot y delta. Why am I doing minus? Minus means up. Remember, y grows this way. So to have the ninja go up, you have to subtract. You add to go down, you subtract to go up. Okay? So what's going to happen here? Here's what's happening. Look, when you go into your loop and you draw, the first time you draw, look, you press the up arrow. Is the y delta currently zero? Yes, it is. We change the y delta to three and we're done. It comes here, draws the ninja exactly in the same place. Y has not changed. Y delta changed, but Y has not changed. We then do update data. 
update data updates the hero's y coordinate by subtracting y delta. It then loops again, does it again, loops again, does it again. So let's see what happens. I hit up. Whee! <laughs> That's what you wanted. All right, good. By the way, I'm gonna hit right. I'm gonna hit right as the ninja's going up. Watch. Hang on. Okay. Wait, sorry. Let me do it again. It worked, right? You saw it, I think. <laughs> okay. Yes? Okay. But you guys, I'm guessing, see a problem with this. What is the problem? Is that the, is it just to launch the ninja into space? <laughs> fair, fair. Okay, so as the ninja is going up, you probably want to have a limit to how, how long it's going to go up, right? Do we, double this, this, do, do we need this if? Which if? This one? Because it would just keep subtracting zero and you would end up with nothing. You're right. You actually don't need it. But now we're going to add more if statements here. So you might want to for the rest of it. Just bear with me. Okay, so if it's not zero, we want to check where you are. There are two things. So first of all, as you're going up, there should be some minimum, like maximum height that the ninja should jump to, right? Beyond that, I think it's, you know, kind of impossible, even for ninjas. So let's have the maximum height be, I don't know, 200? Yeah? Whatever, just bear with me. Okay, so let's have this. If hero.y is greater than, is less than canvas.height minus 200, no, 200, so we had the base, how, how long was the grass, how big was the grass? Floor was this, so starting from the floor, max jump height. I don't, why don't we compute max jump height here? Cost max jump height is floor y, Minus 200. You get it? You get to the floor, and then you go 200 from there. So 200 less than the floor, approaching zero, which is this. Make sense? Okay. So this is the maximum jumping height. So if hero y is less than that maximum jumping height, or equal to, we want to flip the delta downward. Okay, so we want the delta, actually, you know what, instead of subtracting delta, yeah, this is fine, okay. How do we flip a delta? A delta is a number, right? How do you flip it from positive to negative? Minus. Times negative one. Isn't that easier? You, right? A positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive. Right? Did someone say really? <laughs> okay. Huh? Minus zero minus y delta. Just put a minus before the hero that y delta. I'm um, not sure you can. Let's try it. I've never tried that. Wait. Yes, you can. Okay. We could also, instead of multiplying by negative one, you can just do this apparently. It ends up being the same. Cool. Okay, so this will flip the y delta. So let's check. So let's go up. <laughs> I think you, you can guess what happened, but let's do it again. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too much, right? 
The maximum jump height can't, is too much. Let's have it be seven. <laughs> Let's do seventy. Did you say the height of the ninja? Blah, blah. Okay, but in that case, we need access to this. So let's put this above. Wait. Um, no, because we need this inside. So we need to do this. And now here we can say minus the where's the uh, game data dot hero dot height. Let's say he can jump three times his height. Two times his height. Two times his height. Yeah. Three times Ooh, something's bad. Wait, 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 wait. Make sure Vat bottom out it. Miropa, Miropa. S O K R. Minus game dev hero height. In Chamara, Miropa, Miropa. Chair. So look, something happened, right? I just go back to the last working version. So I can use this here. So we want game data dot hero dot height times two. Okay. Oh, sorry. One second. Um, one more. It's roughly the, the right. It's sort of working. Wouldn't you say? So I can move. Oh, sorry. I can move the ninja, and I can make him jump. Right. So obviously you don't want the ninja to fall into, you know, the abyss. There should be this the floor is there for a reason. It should stop people from falling. So we need this to also stop the ninja, right? So let's go back to where we're updating the delta. If the delta is not equal to 0, so in addition to checking the top, we need an else if Hero dot y is less than or equal to y, what is it? y floor? Floor y. In that case, what we'll do is set hero y to 0, oh, sorry, to uh, floor y. And let's reset the delta, hero delta, y delta to 0. So, let's try it. Mm. Eh. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Something broke. I, I, yeah, I already know, but watch. Wait one second. Wait one second. <laughs> Minus. Ah, it jumps up and down. Not what I wanted. Okay. Any suggestions? So let's go through the logic again. So when I press the button, I said hero y delta to 3. Fine. I said hero y to y delta. And then when update data is called, it subtracts 3. Port tank. Nope, that's not it. Let's think. 
hero y, so this is fine, we know this works, this is the problem. If hero dot y is less than the floor. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Remember it's growing the other way, right? Thank you. Okay, so we have this basic ninja running around and jumping. Okay, not bad. How much time do we have? Okay, 10 minutes. <clears throat> um, let's draw some evil people. Like bad guys. Yeah? Do you want to kill Mario? Really? All right. Breaking news. Mario killed by a ninja. Okay. Right, then take the first picture. Right, what? Right, then take the first picture. And this one is a bad guy. Bad guy? Bad guy? I like this one more than this one. <laughs> Copy image address. <laughs> Shot seva, huh? Okay, guys, listen, the game would be more interesting if we had more than one bad guy. Don't you think? So let's have each bad guy. So first of all, let's have the image. Um, <clears throat> const bad guy image, image, new image, bad guy image dot source. Whoa, wait, 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 no, 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 wait, sorry, one second. Um, Not that's Nam Houston, Miroka. Yeah, okay, good. That's what I want. Okay. Um, bad guy image. So, what do we want the bad guy to have? Well, just like our hero, he needs a coordinate, right? So, x is not 100, but say a little bit that way 150. Y should be the floor. Image should be this. Uh, width can be, let's have them be the same size as, or bigger. Okay, 40, but the height will be 70. Uh, X delta 1, Y delta 1. Okay, that's one bad guy. Let's have one more. Actually, let's just draw one bad guy for now, and in a homework you can do more. Update data. So you see all this code that we have here for the hero? We now need more code for the bad guy, right? Um, you understand why, right? Our array has one item, so I take the first one. This makes sense to you? Yes? No? Yes? No? Yes, good. <clears throat> so what do we want the bad guy to do? Well, just, okay, let's just not do anything for now. Just draw him. So let's go to our draw function. So here we draw the hero. And here we'll draw the bad guy. Cost bad guy. <clears throat> Wait for it. Two, two, two. Bad guys width and bad guys height. Yeah. Ooh. Why do you think he grew so long? 
than, than the ninja, which is why. So just to make it, so just to make it simpler, let's have the height be the same, just for now. Or we can just make, Exactly, you can do floor um, minus the difference, which is 55, 70 minus 55, right? Okay. So now let's attack. <laughs> attack. So, question Why do you think the ninja is behind Darth Vader? Yeah, because you drew the ninja, then you drew the Dark Vader, right? Or the bad guy. Um, why don't we flip it? Instead, let's draw the bad guy first, and then the hero. Oh, yeah. It's like a what? Yeah, maybe. Can um, we make chili like jumping on it? Like Mary? Okay. So, okay, so one thing we could do, right? Listen, listen, one thing we could do is have one more picture where he has a sword out like this. So one picture like this, one picture like this. And every time you hit a button, the image inside of the hero changes from this image to this image. And then after you draw that a few frames, maybe you flip it back. Right? So that way you, do, you have this. Every time you hit the... It's, make sense? Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing you might want to do is if you, if you inter intersect with the bad guy and your sword is out, you kill the bad guy. But, if you intersect with the bad guy and your sword is not out, the bad guy kills you. Yeah? How could you check that? As you're moving around, how could you check that the two cross? In your update data, the same place where you check if you've gone outside the limits, all you have to do is get access to the bad guy, which you have, Access to the hero, which you have. You have hero x, y with height, and you have bad guy x, y with height. Just check to see if they overlap. It's just basic math. Yes? And if they do, update the state. Ta-da! Game development. Yay. Okay. Uh, do you guys have questions? Do you guys have questions about today's talk? <laughs> Concerns, uh, comments, yes, sir. How can we take the background and yes, so it goes and goes? <laughs> okay, so there are two ways to do that. One is you just have a bunch of pictures, right? And what you do is you try to, um, you have them contiguous, like they're separate pictures, but if you put them next to each other, it does like, it creates a loop. So you have, say, three pictures. But the last picture, the border, needs to fit this border. So it looks like it's looping. Like if you put it in a circle and you go like this, it looks like it's just looping. That's one common way. And the way you to do that is, it's just math. You draw your picture, right? As they move, you have to follow how long they've, how many times they've moved. So you have to follow the X. And you have to move that picture over and you have to draw the next picture. And then you have, you get it? Yeah, okay. The other way is to, instead of drawing a picture, do the same thing, but draw the background yourself. One common way, by the way, um, actually, uh, I think Armin, is Armin here? Baron again? No? Okay, he's not here. Okay. At Tumo, he did this thing where he did something very similar. He drew stars. So he had these white things sort of flying like this, like you're flying through space, like he had a spaceship flying and he had stars in the background. But he would draw the stars and he, all he would do is randomly generate a dot and move it, randomly generate a dot and move it. And so every frame was different because stars were different. You can uh, do interesting things like have them change color and stuff like that. Like you can do crazy stuff. Um, did I answer your question? 
Like, do what? Like, the legs move. Yes, I want to. Easy. You have two pictures, one this way, one this way, one or three pictures, depending on how, the resolution you want. And all you do is when you draw, you have like a, 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 an image index that you keep changing. So you draw that image, next time you draw the next one, next time, but then when you get to the end, you draw the first one and you keep looping like this. Yeah? Very good. Uh, other question? Yes, sir. Uh, can you manually specify which object is drawn before? So you don't like uh, draw zero, then draw bad guy, but uh, at the end, like in the loop, you specify that this object is drawn before this. So, so there are frameworks on top of Canvas that let you do this sort of stuff, that treat everything like an object, and you can do the Z index, you can do click tests, you can do. But I want you guys to work with like the, the, the very minimum because it forces you to write more code, yeah? So in regular Canvas, no. In regular Canvas, you By the way, one thing that you guys will often find is it's useful to put things in separate functions. So instead of having your update data update all the data, put the data that updates the hero in a separate function and call it from here. Put the stuff that updates the bad guy and call it from here. That way you're sort of grouping the logic and you're abstracting it rather than putting it all in one big batch. Just think about that. Other questions? Yes. Can we have this code? No. <laughs> but look, it's recorded, right? So you have YouTube. Don't worry. But I. But this will force you to, even if you want to follow it, you have to watch, listen to me talk, unless you mute me, <laughs> and then um, go one character at a time, which will help you learn, actually. Um, other questions? Okay? All right, awesome. Let's take a photo and get out of here.